Hi, and welcome to the Joyful Balance podcast. You're here with your two hosts. I'm Mira, and I've got Denise with me. I'm a nutritional therapist with a focus on psychology and how to improve your mental health and your cognitive health through nutrition. I've got Denise with me, who's a cognitive behavioral hypnotherapist who works especially with clients struggling with sleep and habit change. And together, we're here to take you on a journey to understand all about your brain, your body, and have the both of these two things work together. So stick with us. We're going to tell you all about your mind, your brain and your body and how all of these three things are deeply interlinked. And today we're talking on our final episode, or certainly at least our penultimate episode, all about balance. Yeah. So how are you doing, Denise? Answer your question. I'm 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 fine. And um I think I am more um at peace than when we started this journey. Oh wow, that's great. How how are you feeling? So this is a weird snapshot in time for me because like there's been a lot of personal change that's gone on for me but I think I'm weathering that storm pretty well. Um, Good. I think it's been a, it's been a challenge uh, with some of the personal stuff that's gone on that's not me but affects members in my family. Um so yeah, I think I think I oh how can I I don't know how to actually say this really. I think like some good things have come out mm. of the last few weeks certainly of doing this journey and okay. i think there's more to come like this is only obviously the very beginning of that yeah that's yeah. kind of where i am yeah. i think i mean it's only been nine weeks let's let's be honest yeah exactly yeah. and like yeah. change takes a while and we always encourage you to do things at your own pace and also to find a lifestyle that kind of really works for you right? yeah which is which is a lot of what this episode is actually about exactly it's it's all about how we found our own balance and by no means what we do is uh, some sort of recipe or prescription for what you should be doing we're just trying to to shed the light on on opportunities and and avenues that you might take for yourself and mm. obviously with everything we say guys i mean take it or leave it it's it's not we're not trying to preach anything to you and we're not trying to gospel anything to you besides the fact that you need to move your body eat right and hydrate yourself get the, sleep yes exactly those those kinds of things we definitely want to preach about yeah because they are so important but the other things and how we are getting there ourselves it's just a, a matter of giving you examples exactly so currently my example is that i do sleep i i sleep quite well i am very pleased as a sleep therapist that i'm sleeping well <laughs> and also a couple of weeks ago i was telling you about my cosmo quiz and how it was oh, showing yes. up as I, I was nearly burnt out i am I'm, I'm in the process i am I'm, I'm taking steps so that i can experience more balance in my life which is fine i'm i'm very pleased with that um Christmas is around the corner. Mm -hmm. That comes with a lot of uh, pressure mm -hmm. from other people. Not so much from myself, mm. but, you know, others. They want you here. They want you there. Come to my house. Come to my party. <laughs> but that's a good problem to have. Absolutely, yeah. And besides that, I think it's just feeling... Okay, I'm going to say something which doesn't make sense. Okay, and go on. I'm sure it doesn't make sense in a lot of people's heads is... I am getting very uncomfortable in the comfort in the comfort and very comfortable in the uncomfortable. Okay. So what I mean by that is when a situation is very comfortable, I go like hmm hmm what else can we do here? <laughs> As in what challenge, what something? I mean I'm, I'm striving to make that comfort a little bit more outside of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Because as we know and uh, both of us know this very deeply, the best things you you kind of do or decide upon are outside of your comfort zone because they challenge you and they push you as a human, right? Um and then when it is very uncomfortable out there, I'm trying to become somewhat comfortable with it. I know it's an oxymoron because you can't be comfortable and uncomfortable at the same time. But that's what I'm striving for. I just want to find that right balance so that I don't take everything for granted and I challenge myself. Yeah. But I also realize that there is uncomfortable situations out there to be had and there are lessons to learn from those. Totally. I think, yeah, I, ca I can relate to that in the sense of in the sense of actually that that's a really important skill to have is to be uncomfortable i mean to be comfortable in the uncomfortable because it's very likely in anyone's lifetime that that for example change happens for whatever reason whether that's good or bad change and 
dealing with change is an essential skill for life that cannot it can be inspired by other people but it just comes with experience I think Mm -hmm. and so I I like the idea of of not accepting status quo and yeah pushing yourself a bit outside your comfort zone sometimes that requires a bit of help either from you know support from friends and family or a leap of faith or yeah like just just kind of deal you know you know trying to cope with the anxiety but generally it's always worth experimenting and trying different things to understand what what a, a lifestyle for you that gives you balance and and makes you feel good is it's really important mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so I, I get the sense we're going to ramble a lot on this episode we'll try not to but it's probably <laughs> going to happen it's not so much a ramble it's more of a of how life is uh, to be honest because there's no linear point mm-hmm. i mean you probably have seen this with people you work with they come up and say oh i'm at point a i want to go to b and i want it in a straight line and I want to you know take so many steps and I'm gonna be there well life is not like that you're gonna sometimes take three steps in advance two steps backwards you might have a blip you might fall off the you know uh, healthy diet uh, wagon and then you come back up on it and you might uh, sometimes uh, not cope um, the best you can cope with stress and uh, resort to your old um, habits. Mm. Uh, but then you come back up to it. So that's what I'm... It's not so much a ramble. It's more of a, this is life, guys. Yeah. You, you go up and you go down. You come sideways. And at the, what I'm trying to say is the, the key to all of this is that you just keep allow going. yourself to yeah. keep going. Exactly, as you say. Just keep going and, you know, be... Uh, supportive of yourself and that's one one thing that I I realized in the last uh, um, nine weeks or so is just to be supportive of of myself totally yeah it's it's so easy to forget about it oh yeah like you know I think I think we can get into I think what Denise is saying what we're talking about as well is the fact that you know things will wax and wane right so sometimes like for me and and exercising for example there will be weeks where I am on top of it and I have you know completed my commitment of three times a week then there'll be a week where for example I get my period and maybe I only go twice or dealing with personal uh, difficulties so I only managed to get to the gym once last week and rather than sitting there sort of berating yourself thinking god you know I'm, I'm you know and then and then therefore thinking you failed and then and then never going back to the gym because because you've not been able to hold up a quote-unquote unperfect routine you accept that there is a blip for a good reason and then you decide to just go you know you go back to it and and it's also about like you know that's a really important part of keeping sustainable change is accepting that sometimes there will be challenges that are almost out of your control Mm. and you just have to relax on some of these like routines but it's also acknowledging that that can't continue forever and at some point you know and pretty is you know reasonably in good time you um you realize that actually you need to get that routine back because that's what's giving you you know mental and physical health yeah and that's actually one point that i really want to discuss with everybody and with yourself as well Mm. it's just this routine so this pop culture we live in our current culture predominantly where we are as in in the uk and probably in america and canada and other western countries is fairly the same is this oh routine is not really it's mundane it's not really something you should be doing and if you have a routine you're old or something like that sometimes it has this bad rap mm. of routine is not the right thing mm. and i'm just gonna say it it, it isn't <laughs> at least in my personal view a routine is quite important to have because it prepares you for different uh, tasks and activities that you do during the day and during Mm. the weeks and during the months but it also keeps you consistent and keeps you committed and keeps you uh, um, you know on track more than relying on external motivational factors would ever do yeah because it creeps you you know if you have a routine it's like you need to be doing a b c d yeah and then you You know what your commitments are exactly and you're very clear on those and you do them and they bring you joy and you have the satisfaction of achievement and Mm. you're like oh I've done that I've done my 3,000 steps today I'm well done me kind of thing yeah versus not having any sort of routine and being very much reliant yeah excuse me on on things that are external yeah because remember our focus of control our locus of control is you can't control (laughs) so many things outside of your own being Mm. and sometimes we get 
fucked up in that thinking that you can yeah no, <laughs> and it brings absolutely. you a lot of frustration right yeah, totally like i think yeah i think that's really key and for me there's something in a routine that holds you accountable to doing mm. certain things by a certain time or at a certain time so for me, it's just much easier to know that I have a commitment to go to the gym in the morning or know that I have a commitment that I eat, you know, on this day when I don't have any food in the fridge or anything pre already prepared, that that is a block of time that I will spend cooking to make myself a, a brain friendly meal or um maybe I've neglected a personal connection and that's mm. when you reach out to that person. So I don't know, like routines are I think an exception for me personally are an exceptionally grounding and a process of, of knowing where you need to be, what you need to be doing and when that needs to be happening. And that just helps me, you know, you feel more in control. Um, you know what's going on and, and it allows you to just step back and assess everything and make sure are you living according to the values that you want to live and according to the health values that you want to have, right? Mm, yes. Um, and it and it helps uh, plan your your day mm. in a in a way that you are comfortable with and um, a little bit counterintuitively it brings focus on the present moment because if you have a routine you are very much engaged in the activity you're doing right now mm -hmm. right and yes you have an element of thinking uh, what is going to happen next but it doesn't allow you so much to live in the future if that makes sense yeah or indeed the past I think. yes yeah. yes because a lot of us get sucked up in the tomorrow i'll be doing x and i'll be looking forward to which is absolutely great to be looking forward to plans with mm. you know friends family or whatever but it's also very important to be in the present moment as you're doing it right now so i've had a very busy week so i think my brain is 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 packing up slightly but, but i'm gonna i'm gonna soldier through but i'm interested denise what does balance mean to you uh okay very good question balance means different things in different aspects mm -hmm. psychologically it means that sometimes i'm harsh with myself okay but then i snap out of it not in the sense of snap but i you know digest it and yeah. sit with it and so on and then i realize i am kind to myself and i'm compassionate and curious mm -hmm. so balance is psychologically is there where i know sometimes i will be quite you know a recovering perfectionist that i am yeah i will be a little bit more you should have been 200 percent done and it's only like 80 percent but then the other half of me says, yeah, but it's good enough. And look, people have been happy about it and so on. So that is balanced psychologically. Mm. And then on a behavioral side, I split this psychologically behavior and um, cognitively. On a behavioral side, it's more about uh, doing the actions, as you say, the routine and going through the motions and then knowing that once in a, once in a while, I'm just going to forget about all of it, lie on my sofa and eat chocolate. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah, because I know it's not for life and I know it's a temporary thing and it's the right thing that I need in that particular moment in time and I'm not going to belittle me myself yeah, about absolutely. it. Yeah, absolutely. And then cognitively, it's about having those thoughts of, you know, sometimes you worry, you worry about the future, you worry about your, I don't know, career progression sometimes or you worry about how many clients I'm going to work with next week and is it going to be easy, is it going to be difficult and so on. But I replace those worrying thoughts with cognitive diffusion, which in simple terms means another way of doing meditation. Mm. And then t finding balance in that and understanding that thoughts are not truth. Yeah. Having a thought doesn't mean that that is absolutely true. Yeah. It's, there's no absolute tr truth in our thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they are yeah. very, very delusional of us <laughs> and they're taking us down the wrong path. So in a snapshot, balance for me is understanding there are different facets Sometimes I'm doing all the right things and ticking all the right boxes. Sometimes I'm straying from that and that is fine and it's temporary and I'm going to come back into it. Mm. So balance is there is no right or wrong. There is there is what it is now. Yeah. And balance for me is there is no white or black. There are many shades of gray mm. and there is no all or nothing. I have to be all perfect or I'm nothing at all. It's all of the in-betweens. Yeah. So that is what balance has turned into for me currently. That, wow, that's a fantastic answer. And it's a bit embarrassing in a sense for me because I've purposely called my 
business balance, me nutrition. That's where you'll find me on Instagram, etc. But <laughs> you've given a way more eloquent answer of what balance actually means but than the, I will. That is just my answer. What is your answer? And what? there is no, you know, it's not a competition. No, anyway. of course not. Of course not. But I think uh, it's a good. Qu- it is a good question. I think for me, balance is more. It's it's very much about awareness and it's about living a, an authentic mm-hmm. life, right? So yep. you we are all accountable towards ourselves and account and that accountability means that we have a responsibility to look after ourselves and that is through nutrition through exercise through uh any kind of psychological tools that you are at your disposal that you choose to use and it's about social connections and about living a very authentically healthy life but like much like Denise says you know there will be times when that falls by the wayside for very good reasons so Saturday night oh I don't even know what night I think Friday night I was so fed up that I was like fuck it I'm gonna have I'm gonna watch Downton Abbey and I'm gonna eat giant ice cream yeah and that's fine like there's nothing wrong with that yeah. because I can't genuinely remember the last time I even had ice cream. So it's it's fine. It's absolutely fine. And, you know, but then I know that and I know that I let the gym fall by the wayside. So I know that that's a commitment that I have to, you know, reignite. And it was only a week that I've kind of really been off with it. And so I think it's about, for me, balance is absolutely about accountability towards your own health and to for the majority of the time you are engaging in behaviors that benefit your health and well-being in all of the different facets we've talked about so whether that's again through nutrition through exercise Mm -hmm. through maintaining social connections through pursuing hobbies that you love anything all in all of that and the above and and more but it's also being fine and letting that go for social gatherings or you know just for the sake of enjoying life quite frankly yeah um and that's what it should be about is about being a being able to find your own personal balance between living healthily and and keeping yourself well versus also enjoying yourself and that doesn't mean that one is mutually exclusive from the other i would certainly hope that you're able to find healthy practices that you enjoy Mm -hmm. so for me it's i do like really like cooking um I, I love seeing really f- like trees. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and uh, I, you know, um, what else do I enjoy? Like, I enjoy spending time with my family, spending time with friends. And that doesn't, yeah, and that's not, and they're all healthy things that aren't necessarily, they're not, not enjoyable. They are very enjoyable. They're extremely enriching. There will be things that are a little bit less fun to do for some people, depending on who you are, depending on what, what the activity is. Um, for me, you know I, I'm just trying to think of the things that I don't enjoy as much obviously the gym I'm becoming more friends with but it historically has not been an enjoyable thing but it shouldn't be punitive um you know whether that's sometimes I don't want to journal but I know it's important to do so mm-hmm, so I do mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. uh it, yeah like you know remembering to take my medications on time um you know d- doing little you know having to do certain chores that can keep you know a tidy space and not enjoyable but important part of living a healthy a healthy life so Mm. yeah I think it's about it's for me in in a nutshell balance is about is actually very much about accountability it's very individual because some people you know will have to live closer to the line of um you know in terms of the ratio of time that they spend being healthy and and in a quote-unquote enjoyment um that kind of balance might be tipped way more to just being healthy a lot of the time and in fact most of the time for for other people that balance might be a little bit less skewed Mm. um it just depends on your own personal set of circumstances and and you know how how life goes for you and and what does and doesn't happen um you know whether you just you whether you end up with a medical condition or or you know touch wood that you don't Mm. So, yeah, it's it's accountability. It's understanding where the balance, where the scales lie for you, and how that tips in either direction. But it's it's also about permission to have space in your life for pure enjoyment and occasional indulgence without thinking that it's going to be the end of the world. I yeah, think. exactly, because that comes back to the all or nothing thing. Yeah, and to be honest with you, I have to tell you a little story. 
I, I appreciate your answer before I move on to my story. And oh, I think you. it's going to resonate with a lot of people because it just it just is reality. Mm. And I, that's why it resonates with me as well. So um, in terms of my little story, I wanted to say that uh, there was a time not many moons ago when I was taking uh, this all or nothing thinking mm -hmm. to a whole new extreme. And I was very proud of it. Mm. I thought that's the way to live. Mm. I thought I literally there is a... There is a song in a uh, in in Greek music, and it's by my favorite artist ever. And uh, the song is called "All or Nothing." Really? Is it, is it in Greek? It is in Greek. Okay. And do you speak Greek? Yes, I do. Oh right. Okay. So uh, by <laughs> for those of you who are um, Greek enthusiasts or who are indeed Greek, I'm referring to Mihalis Hatsigianis or like Tipota, and it's a song about. Uh, is it on Spotify? We're gonna yes. have to put a link. Yes, and it's about uh, uh, a love song. Obviously, most of the singers in Greece. Uh, well, he's actually Cypriot, but doesn't matter. I'm derailing. <laughs> it's about love, and it's about how this particular person wants to do all or nothing for this other person. Right. Which is great. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was taking it with a badge of honor, and I was thinking, oh my God, all or nothing. And I was talking to a friend of mine. I was like, oh, I'm thinking of having a tattoo. Mm. Um, I don't have a tattoo. I will never do one, but... Oh. At that point, I was thinking. I have to. Well, good for you. Thinking about a third, but go on. Um, for me, it's the pain. No, I can't oh, it's really not that bad. It depends on what you want and where you want it. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we are getting derailed. Um, it's fine. I, I appreciate the input. Thank you. I will ask you more questions. No worries. About uh, tattoos and <laughs> stuff. Anyway, the tattoo at the time I wanted to get was all was this uh, say uh, um, music um, song. Uh, all or nothing in Greek somewhere okay. and I said to a couple of friends at the time and they were like oh my god that's so you <laughs> and I was just like oh my god this is the badge of honor that's so me well fast forward a few years read about psychology retrain as a therapist and all or nothing what does that mean Cognitive distortion. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very detrimental. <laughs> what yeah. does that mean? I'm not proud of it anymore. <laughs> yeah. So all or nothing, which we were pointing towards in, in different ways in this conversation, is not really the best way to see your life mm -hmm. because it isn't all or nothing. Yeah. It is all of the different facets, variables and things in between. Yeah. Sometimes you have all. Yay. Sometimes you might have nothing, mm -hmm. but you're never going to live your life in either the all or the nothing. You're always going to be transitioning somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. And the best way to prepare yourself for it is to be somewhere in between and to accept that sometimes you do all the right things and sometimes you do nothing right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where you maybe possibly find balance and you understand that also you shouldn't aspire to do either of the extremes. You, you can be somewhere in the middle. Um, obviously, that doesn't apply when you are trying to become or be a specialist in a certain field. Because mm -hmm. if you want to be the best physicist in the universe, for example, you would need to, you know, practice that and you need to make that a priority and you need to just focus go on towards that, yeah, that yeah, goal, yeah. right? You can't just be like, I want to be the best physicist, but I am going to be nothing. <laughs> so it doesn't work. Yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I know I know what you mean yeah you you yeah it's kind of that that is the all or nothing you either yeah you either in, immerse yourself in that world fully yeah 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 but at the same time being uh doing that let's stay with the physicist example sure um doesn't mean that you're not gonna eat right or you're not gonna see your friends mm -hmm. or that you're not gonna go home for Christmas kind of thing mm -hmm. you know so it can't be just one it's it's it, it can be all as in all I'm doing is physics and nothing else. Yeah. And if I'm doing something else besides physics, then I'm doing nothing. If you see what I mean. Mm. Some people see things very black and white like I used to do one time. And it's just like if I am not pushing my career forwards, then I'm doing nothing. Yeah. And you lose sight of all of your progress. You lose sight of everything else you've done in your life and you just focus on the one distorted thought that you are doing nothing but you are actually making progress yeah I think that's something I I forget very very often um 
it's so I think that's a very good point like it's very easy to lose sight of your progress and it, and it only ever becomes obvious I think when you stop doing the thing mm. and you realize actually how important a part of it of your life it was and actually how much progress you made because you know if you just take fitness as an example like you know you stop going you stop doing it for a while and then you go back to it and then you've realized oh maybe you've lost a bit of strength or endurance and it you can pick it back up and it's absolutely fine but um and I think I've completely derailed the original we've derailed the original metaphor but I think yeah like I think it's very easy to to think that you you know just because you've stopped doing something or you've lost that balance that you can't regain it again mm. the, the, the important way of doing that is just is really I think personally and I'm hoping Denise will agree is just awareness it's just awareness of what are the things that are actually beneficial to you once you've kind of done your little experiments of, of trying you know different things and it's about awareness of what has worked what hasn't and and how you can incorporate the things that have worked mm. to become more regular practices and tip that scale mm-hmm. towards co- consistently and and yeah I think it's like consistently just doing the things that really benefit you yeah um and and it's about finding little tools that help you do that you know like I think when you're trying to find your own balance, it's um, it's very difficult to perhaps keep track of your progress unless you have tools that you employ to help you do that. Mm, so mm. just as an example, um, you know, routine is very important for me and I need to, you know, psychologically, it, it's just, yeah, I just do much better with a routine. So I can be really bad, for example, um, at remembering to take my medications at the right times. And particularly with my morning ones, I'm awful. So I just got a pill box and put all mm. the pills for that week in these uh, their individual containers for that day. And it solves that problem, you know? Mm. Mm. So, and it wasn't expensive. It was like seven quid from Amazon or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's about what are the tools that you can find that also help you mm. find your balance and help you track your own progress and help you... Um, stay accountable to the things that it is that you want to achieve yeah. in order to have that the lifestyle that you want to have. For some people, it's fitness trackers. Yeah. Um, for other people, it might be a, a fitness, a, a kind of health journal, for example. Mm. Um, for it, others, it's therapy. And it's learning therapy. How to do it? Absolutely. It's it's or it's social connections and staying accountable to other people. There's lots of different ways you can do it that don't necessarily have to cost anything, for example. It might be that you put a planner on your wall like, and you just tick things off on a daily basis. Mm. There's so many different ways of doing it. Um, but I think a- accountability and awareness are so central to finding your balance because you won't know where the scale between uh, kind of healthy behaviours and enjoy and particularly enjoyable but less healthy behaviors you're never I think it's gonna be very difficult to find that balance unless you are aware Mm, and absolutely and having accountability in some shape or form Mm. I think is so important and I think just to supplement that element what I wanted to say is that if you treat this for yourself uh, as a data gathering exercise absolutely you don't know what you don't know yeah so at the moment when you start your journey let's assume you the listener are starting your wellness journey you've been inspired you want to make some changes in your life at the beginning you're just gathering data Mm. you're just gathering data in regards to is this working for me does this sleep routine really make me happy Mm. If I manage my stress in this way with these coping mechanisms would actually bring me to feel less stress. Will it increase my focus? Will it increase my concentration? Does this particular hobby make me enjoy exercise more? Let's Mm. imagine it's a hobby that is connected to exercise. Those kinds of things. At the beginning, you're just gathering data. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah, it's true. And And this is why experimentation also is so important, even though it feels like it can sometimes be... A waste of time like it's not a waste of time because as as denise said it's a data gathering exercise uh you know uh, activity so you may- just know that next time you don't like it yeah you and you, you don't, don't do, do it, it. Yeah, yeah exactly so maybe it is that you've tried a new uh social club to try and meet new friends um hmm. and you've gone there and it's not really been what you thought it would be and that's fine like you've still gathered that data you've tried it and you know that it doesn't work and that's okay 
Um, but be truthful to yourself. Why yes. did it not work? Did you go to that club and you sat in the corner not engaging in any conversation with anybody? Yes. Or did point. you go there with an open heart and mind and it just didn't click? Because yeah. you have to, as Mira was pointing, you have to be uh, increasing your awareness. And that means also of your self-awareness. You need to understand whether doing something X, mm. doesn't matter what X is, did you do it wholeheartedly or did you just tick the box in the sense, oh, I went, but I stayed in a corner. I looked at my phone the whole time. I went home and I was feeling miserable. It didn't work. Yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. So it's also about persistence as well, because I think it's easy to kind of, it's so easy to engage in behaviors that are, are, not, are unhealthy, that the healthy behaviors become less appealing. Like you can order something on delivery. Why would you, why would you cook if you don't have to in that sense? But, you know, it's um it is about persistence and and just keeping in mind that about why you're doing these things why they help and how they help to, in order to keep you going and even in those times where you do want to falter there are ways i think to at least make them slightly better choices mm. in a way mm. Mm. like uh before i before we go down that route yes i will interrupt you for a Please. second yeah yeah because we always say that we need to take a pause so I felt the need to take a pause from your idea. Mm. And I was just going to say, even when you want to go, as Mira was saying, down the maybe not the right path at that particular moment in time, and you are looking to make healthy choices, healthier, naughty choices, mm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I would say take a pause and think of what is that going to bring you? Mm. Do you know why? I thought about it yesterday i was having this idea of nothing food n no food in the house right okay what are we gonna eat what we're we gonna eat and i was just thinking oh maybe we can get something delivered or maybe yeah. we can get something from like i don't know kfc mcdonald's whatever something you know mm. some some sort of something to make you feel a little bit uh, better yeah and i've discovered by doing that micro pause that i didn't want any of them because the nutritional gain from that was crap and i don't like the taste anymore yeah but if we don't take the pause yeah, you just do it. You just do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what did you do instead then for dinner? We went to the supermarket and we cooked. Oh, amazing! It wasn't out of pleasure. Yeah, but we realized that we didn't want to do the other option. That's all. Yeah. So what Mira was? I'm sorry for derailing no, your all. thought. Mira was saying that if you do want to stray from it because of whatever reason you have at that moment in time, and even if there is no reason at all, you just want it, just take a pause and think about what that, whatever it is will bring you afterwards because sometimes you're hyping it up in your head thinking oh that is going to be so lovely but then when you have it like i'm referring to food here and then you're like eh, was it really good no do i feel still feel hungry yeah does it make me feel sluggish and unhappy yeah maybe i shouldn't have had it yeah i agree like i think um i think yeah it's it's so easily done and i, I think denise's example of um of food is a great one because and, I, and I, here's another example for movement as well. Like you may, I had a day when I had really, I think I was mentioning this either earlier in this episode or certainly in another one, um, where I had a really late, late night on the Thursday and I tend to do a, the gym on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And I thought, Christ, I really don't want to go to the gym on Friday. I'm so tired. But I thought, you know what? Just do half the session. Mm. So I went, I literally was in the gym for like half an hour max and I came back out. But I was like, at least I still did something. Mm -hmm. And like, even if you want the fast option in terms of food, like Denise said, have a look in your fridge or see what you have. Or if you can nip down to the supermarket in, in a car and just pick up a few salad -y bits and some pre-cooked protein and have a meal that way, you know. That will still be better than whatever exactly. delivery can bring to your door. Exactly. Or even if you are going to do delivery, like... Order a side salad and eat the side salad first. Like, yeah, there's exactly. e there's so much you can do to improve the the kind of the choices that you make. Mm. Like, even they found like um, it, eating the protein part of your meal first can help stabilize your blood sugar levels for whatever it, else it is that you're eating. Yeah, like, and keeps the society. I yeah. think you will feel fuller quicker and for longer and for longer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so. Yeah, there's definitely, you know, if you are going to go to a, a, not even a fast food place, but like for you're looking for a quicker lunch, 
can you buy something that's a little bit more veg heavy so that you're and or a different vegetable from one that you've eaten in the last couple of days like all of these things like incrementally you know they are they are better yeah. choices yeah. and so even when you feel like you want to do something that is less than healthy are there a he- is there a healthy way of doing that um yeah, yeah. Keep frozen bananas in your fridge and make eventually make you know for, for a banana like ice cream. Like there's just so many little things that you can. There, you there's can a do. plethora of things that you can do, but I think before before we wrap up this season, what I wanted to say is that we hear you and we see you. Mm. Those of you screaming into your headphones now, saying it's overwhelming, it's too much, I don't know where to start. We've been there. Oh yeah. And it can be overwhelming. And every marketing guru out there is pointing messages at you saying you should do this, or just that, you should do that, and eat like this, and eat your breakfast. And if you have, don't have breakfast, then you're going to have high col- cortisol all day and things like that. And some of those pieces of information are just pure crap. I'm sorry. Mm. And I know it's overwhelming. So if you are one of those people thinking like, I, I want to make a change, but I don't know where yeah. to start, and I don't even understand what is the negative effect of my life currently Mm. just see whether you can solve it for yourself with the resources you have today if you can't speak to someone Uh, ask around go on google ask google if you don't want to do anything else and if you do want to take matters into your own hands and if you are Um, a person struggling with high levels of stress at work and you're not sleeping well and you are having very low energy all the time or some most of the time you're feeling you know lethargic and fatigued and so on speak to somebody like me Mm. I'm not saying necessarily me particularly because maybe you don't I don't know like my voice or the way I look or whatever else reason you have but speak to specialists in that field and see what they can offer you and what they can help you with because there is no point in living your life at the edge of burnout or indeed burned out and also there is no no win if you don't sleep we've we've covered this so many times and I cannot stress how important sleep is for your overall balance you can't have a balanced life if you're not sleeping absolutely yeah I completely agree with that so that's what I'm I'm trying to get sometimes it is overwhelming it's a lot you don't know where to start your life you're feeling maybe stuck you can be unstuck reach out it takes time it takes persistence it takes consistency but these but they are they don't have to be these gigantic leaps they can be small incremental steps and in fact that is better in terms of you you overall sticking to that plan Mm. so that's yeah that's definitely the advice that we would give on that front absolutely so before we wrap this uh, season up we've told you a lot about our journey we've told you where we are striving and when we're making progress and we are very happy with our accountability to each other and Mm -hmm. to ourselves um, let me ask you this, Mira. Mm. If if somebody wants to reach out to you, what should they do? Well, uh, they can send me an email. Uh, it's info at balancedmenutrition.com. Have a look at my website. Um, you can find me on Instagram as well, uh, at balancedmenutrition. Um, and uh, just either directly message me, message me on in- uh, via Instagram or email me. We'll book in a free 15 minute call to understand where your where your problems are and how I can help and we can take it from there. And obviously, if you are a listener of the podcast, um, you can just give uh, Joyful Balance as a code and I will be happy to add a 20% discount to your sessions uh, and, and we'll take it from there. How about you, Denise? Um, very similarly so the code works for me as well so that is joyful balance uh, and you can just mention that you've heard it on the podcast I uh, specialize with people who are struggling with uh, sleep low energy and also uh, who are overwhelmed and worried so that is my core area of specialty and um, I would encourage you if you feel stressed if you don't sleep well if you are worried and overwhelmed with work, with your personal life, and you potentially might even have um, moments where you are questioning where your life is going um, and you feel stuck, then send me an email or uh, reach out on Instagram. You can find me at joyspacetherapy.com and my email is denise at joyspacetherapy.com and you also have all of our links in the description box below have a think 
and let's book a 20 minute conversation. It is a non-binding conversation. If we believe we can work together, we will. If for whatever reason, either of us think we're not the best fit, then I will recommend somebody else or, you know, we will we will see where we, our conversation goes from mm-hmm. there. Yeah, and so, um, and if you want Denise and I to work together with you, that's absolutely an option. Just shoot one of us an email or message one of us or message message the podcast um, page on Instagram and we will be happy to chat that through with with you and and work out what your needs are and and where we can help best. Um, And so with that, guys, we're going to wrap up this season. It's been a lot about the journey that we've had what we've discovered is helpful along the way. We've had some phenomenal guests who we are insanely grateful that they were willing to come and chat to us. Please check out our previous episodes. They are extremely helpful for helping you set up a routine that is success for you. Um, and yeah, reach out if ever you want to get in touch. Please like, follow and subscribe. Um, we'll be announcing further podcast episodes along the way. Um, our old content will always be available and so will we get in touch. And if you can, leave us a five-star review because it really helps other people find the podcast podcast um and hopefully let our little community grow yes and uh, merry christmas everybody yes, celebrating and, and and happy hanukkah and happy uh, new year happy new year yeah we will definitely see you hear you talk to you again in the new year that's going to be 2023 yep. now and in the meantime uh we are open books if you really would like to chat to us about anything at all Literally, we're just one DM away. Exactly. And we will be very happy to chat to you. Exactly. Thank you so much, Mira, for sharing all of your wisdom and all of your learnings for this particular season. I know it's been a challenging one for you at times. Yeah. It's been for me as well. And thank you, listeners, for loving our content and for sharing it and for providing us with feedback. We really, really appreciate yeah. it more than we can tell. And we hope you sleep well, hydrate well. Eat Eat well well. and have a positive outview, um, a positive overview of life in general and that you make the good choices that are good for you. Yeah, exactly. And take care, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.